So if we go back to delta, what does this mean? Well, uh, you see in the other way, it's the other way around. It means that we have the bottom spectrum, which is uh, below uh, something here, extending towards minus infinity. <laughs> so here we have states of low energy, actually. And uh, uh, then, in fact, uh, we have the excited state. which are rare, which are singular, and the content of the uh, uh, conjecture is that the excited states are uh, quantized. Okay. Uh, there is another part of the story. Oh, yeah, by the way, maybe I can uh, give some uh, insider information here if Peter Sarnak is not uh, annoyed at it. Uh, when he gave his lecture at Kyoto, I went up to him and I told him, if, if your conjecture is true, uh, it should really be possible to attack it using the other conjectures. And uh, so finally, that's what we have been doing after a long time. OK. Uh, so the, the, the other part of the story is that uh, uh, Bergeron, uh, in his thesis around uh, uh, 2000, maybe 2001, uh, noticed that uh, for topological applications, it's very important to extend the conjecture to uh, the Hodge Laplacians on K forms. So one <coughs> wants to extend uh, the conjecture to the Hodge Laplacian on K forms. Uh, I'll just say, uh, give, give the example of topological application uh, later, uh, but um, uh, one aspect of the conjecture is that, of course, it gives you a spectral gap. If you look at these, uh, you are going to have uh, uh, here, of course, for uh, j equal to 0, you have the trivial eigenvalue corresponding to uh, the constant functions. And uh, then after that, you have really a non-trivial uh, gap uh, between 0 and the other eigenvalues. And uh, what we uh, want in the case of the k forms is the same thing. So the pertinent thing pertinent point, uh, we want to get a non-trivial uh, spectral gap between uh, lambda equal to zero corresponding to harmonic forms. Of course, there are more of those than for functions and uh, the others. So actually, the, for, for topology, you need something uh, even a lit little weaker. But I will not elaborate more because I'm going to give the statement. Okay. So the, the precise uh, uh, statement here and how it should be attacked using uh, Arthur uh, was explained in our book uh, in 2005. And, um, uh, now let me uh, move to a theorem. So I'm going to write uh, uh, delta n for uh, the following symbol. It's one half minus epsilon n, and um, epsilon n is uh, one over n to the square plus one. Uh, so in particular, note that. Uh, delta n is strictly larger than, uh, strictly smaller than one half, and um, let me recall uh, what this is. Uh, the uh, epsilon n, which is here, is uh, the uh, Luo-Runic-Sarnac. Uh, improvement 
on uh, the uh, Jacques Shalaika uh, a distance to purity smaller than one half estimate. Okay. So again, there are probably people who understand all this without any explanation, but let me just uh, say a, a little more. Uh, uh, most people uh, uh, here believe in the, Riemann, the Ramanujan conjecture, and uh, uh, this means that the uh, eigenvalues of uh, echo matrices are uh, analogously the things which uh, parameterize the eigenvalues of the Laplacian, but I'll, I'll think of the finite primes because it's simpler. Uh, uh, are a pure, are, have absolutely one notable normalization. For GLN. <coughs> for GLN, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, this is, of course, not known except in some arithmetic cases. But uh, Jacques Shalaika got a very useful estimate uh, saying that uh, the eigenvalues are uh, <coughs> uh, sm smaller than Q to one half and of course in the same corresponding way larger than the, the opposite. And uh, so this is the one half and uh, this is the uh, correction to uh, one half. So Luo uh, Runic Sarnak replace one half by uh, one half minus something, and that something actually uh, often uh, make a big difference. <laughs> okay, so that's one thing I wanted to define. And now uh, let me assume also that uh, the uh, degree where I'm working, so uh, uh, I didn't introduce the Laplacian, let me uh, do it here. Uh, so I'm considering K forms, and uh, I have then the Hodge Laplacian, and uh, uh, given the normalization I have sketched for uh, 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 the ordinary Laplacian, then I just use the corresponding normalization. Okay. <laughs> so uh, let me assume that K is uh, positive and smaller than N over 2 where N is even. And uh, let me assume that uh, k is strictly smaller than uh, n minus 1 over 2 when n is odd. <coughs> and now I can uh, state the theorem. So theorem uh, for a congruence quotient as above. Um, as above, remember, means non-triality. Uh, the spectrum of omega k uh, on co-closed forms is contained <coughs> in the union of, so of course it's like the original conjecture. We get first uh, a half space which corresponds to the tempered spectrum. So uh, the more you get uh, uh, forms of higher, the higher the degree is, the more your forms tend to get tempered, so you are higher. Uh, so we get this. And then we have this uh, uh, correction term here, delta n to the square, uh, up to infinity. And then uh, the other uh, eigenvalues are really temp uh, um, quantized. So n minus 1 over 2 minus k to the square minus n minus 1 over 2, sorry, minus j uh, to the square, where uh, here k is uh, larger than, uh, smaller than, uh, j is between k, sorry, 
and uh, n minus 1 over 2. I want strictly smaller here. You can check in the original conjecture that's what we want. Sorry? What? Oh, yes. Uh, what? Uh, I was going to say. <laughs> So n is, of course, the n uh, which was there. And uh, what is it? <laughs> so here, uh, n is, uh, 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 of course, uh, uh, obtained by Langlands uh, factoriality. So here, n is described uh, uh, by uh, Langlands uh, factoriality, realized in this case by Arthur. In other terms, here is uh, how it goes. Uh, we want to consider uh, forms on SON1. G is will be, uh, uh, let's say, it's at SON1 at, at one real place. But in any case, this is the algebraic type of the group. And uh, this means that if I forget about rationality questions and I look at the complex uh, L group, I'm going to have uh, two possible cases. It will be uh, SO of uh, n plus 1 over c. Uh, this is when n plus 1 is uh, even. And um, in the other case, if n, n plus 1 is odd, we have an odd orthogonal group there. And uh, then we get a symplectic group uh, as uh, the dual. And in fact, uh, let me write it this way. I'm going to uh, get uh, sp2l uh, c. Uh, if uh, n is equal to 2n. <coughs> so n is, uh, n is even. OK. And uh, uh, finally, the results will, op will be obtained by uh, using functoriality between those groups and the corresponding uh, GLN. But functoriality, of course, goes through the dual groups. And so n is the natural dimension, which is here. So n is equal to uh, n plus 1 uh, for uh, n plus 1 even. And it is uh, uh, this, which is n, uh, if uh, n is uh, uh, even. Okay. So uh, this is not really important. The important thing is that it. Uh, uh, natural uh, degree for the functoriality of the classical group towards uh, GLN. <coughs> okay. Uh, I want to uh, state the topological uh, consequences, but uh, first let me just make one remark. Uh, I consider co closed forms. Now, of course, if you are working on functions, uh, there is not much room for the image of this star. So uh, this is the original conjecture. And um, you can see that we are fairly close to uh, the original conjecture, except that we get some fuzziness on the bottom of the spectrum here, which corresponds to the approximation to uh, Ramanujan. Um, in the the more general case, I give only a statement for co-closed forms because that's enough, as Bergeron showed, for the topological applications. And uh, technically, um, if you are used to computing with the Matsushima formula, uh, taking co-closed forms allows you to isolate a k-type, and uh, it's easier to compute. It doesn't, it, it doesn't mean that we don't have estimates on all forms, but they are just more complicated. You, you get. It's fairly obvious if you look at the uh, formalism of the Laplacian that when you have those bounds on the Coclos forms, by looking at k, k minus 1, and k plus 1, uh, you also get form uh, bounds everywhere. But they are just uh, less uh, presentable. How many forms? It's zero. Ah. Oh, uh, okay. Zero is there. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let, let me just uh, 
quickly state the topological consequences because they are actually quite interesting. Well, when you prove such things, the consequences for hyperbolic varieties uh, are that uh, they have uh, quasi left sets. properties. Uh, these have been studied by a number of people, in particular by uh, Harris and Lee and uh, then Venkataramana and myself and uh, Venkataramana. Uh, that's in the case of unitary groups. But uh, it's quite striking that they are they also uh, occur in this case for uh, questions of HN, although we have, of course, no complex uh, structures. And uh, uh, what are uh, quasi left set properties? Well, it means that you have your ambient uh, space. So uh, here it will be uh, something like uh, X over uh, gamma, where X is a symmetric space. And uh, uh, in this, you take, uh, for example, a hyperplane, uh, something of the same form, but uh, defined by some other locally symmetric space. So uh, the hyperplane H will be uh, Y over uh, delta. Uh, it could be also of smaller dimension. It will be in our case. And uh, you uh, wonder whether you have the same kind of uh, properties of restriction that you have in the classical case for uh, hyperplanes. So you look at uh, the restriction map from uh, H uh, dot of X over uh, gamma uh, to uh, H dot of uh, Y over delta. So uh, the previous uh, spectral results have several consequences of this type. And I will state only one, but a very simple one. So I'm uh, working in the, uh, again, in the orthogonal case. And uh, so um, now uh, uh, this is, by the way, optimistic. Uh, what has been found by this whole series of people in uh, this work is that if you want to have uh, properties of this kind that you can actually prove, you have to be more flexible as to restriction. Of course, in algebraic geometry, uh, on the projective variety, you actually have an injectivity theorem for the restriction uh, when you cut out a uh, hyperplane section. But that's too op optimistic in the case of Shimura varieties. What you do have is to allow uh, correspondences. So it means that you have to uh, go up, for example, uh, over your variety here and uh, uh, move a little bit your sub-variety by uh, taking a rational element of the group. So you, you, or you stay at the same level but you get some kind of rational pencils like this of uh, varieties. Uh, that's, only, that's why we, you really need to obtain restriction. So that's the case here. And let me state things uh, more precisely. So uh, we have our group G of the specified type, an orthogonal group. And I assume that I have su a subgroup of a Q. OK. And uh, I choose maximal compact subgroup, so I get uh, the corresponding inje injection of symmetric spaces. So I have H over uh, KH. This is H of R, uh, which is embedded in uh, G of uh, R over uh, KG. And this is uh, my space uh, HN. And uh, of course, this will be uh, isomorphic to uh, HK. And then I take. Uh, arithmetic groups and I get corresponding uh, quotients. So we get uh, a map of uh, locally symmetric spaces S H uh, uh, delta in uh, S H uh, gamma. Uh, by the way, uh, I should have said uh, before the preceding statements that I, I would prefer to assume the groups co-compact 
but actually that's not important. The results are easier when they are not. Uh, but at this point, for the topology, let's uh, just assume that everything is co-compact. In other terms, the group G is anisotropic. Okay. <coughs> Sorry? Oh, uh, yes, thanks. So, uh, of course, uh, associated to that, we get a restriction map in a cohomology, uh, H uh, dot of uh, S uh, G uh, gamma uh, into uh, H uh, dot of S H uh, delta. And as I said, to uh, actually get injectivity, you have to move around something. So I'll choose to uh, move around the, uh, the group here, the intersection. So uh, for each uh, gamma in G of Q, I can uh, look also at the restriction uh, HG gamma to uh, H dot of S uh, H inter uh, gamma minus one uh, gamma uh, gamma. So I, I change the group here. I could also move H actually. And then the theorem is the following. Now, in the, the theorem as stated, you have to look at some uh, awful object that personally I don't want to think about, but I'll still write it that way. You have even worse monsters in the literature. Uh, the virtual restriction from the cohomology of uh, SK uh, to so uh, the, the horrendous thing here is the product of all those finite dimensional spaces. But of course, you can rephrase that in a more human uh, uh, fashion. Uh, and then I take the, cor the corresponding quotient, S, uh, H, uh, gamma, uh, gamma. And then uh, this is injective, is injective. So uh, I'll be uh, careful. I think uh, perhaps it's a little better than this, but let's say k rather than m over 2. And m is the dimension of the small thing here. m, of course, there are only a real dimension here. And uh, uh, it's the dimension of, of uh, yes, of, uh, I hope I didn't use the k for h. No, I didn't. Uh, yes, I did. Okay, so let me change this. Yeah. This is M, and K is the degree, and uh, uh, K is to be smaller than M over 2. Sorry? Oh, yes, it's all over C or no torsion. We don't say. Well, I, I, there may be people in this room who can say something about torsion, but not me. Yeah. I'm sorry? S sub K we get G gamma. S, uh, uh, that, I'm sorry, yes, you're right. So S uh, G gamma, thanks. So that's the ambient variety, and these are the small varieties, but we allow ourselves to move them around. OK. <coughs> uh, now, let me remark that uh, both about uh, the results on the spectrum and also uh, the, the topology. Well, actually, I, uh, about the topology, I, I haven't thought this out. But uh, about the spectrum, this is really very particular uh, to uh, congruence groups. So uh, let, me, let me pause for remarks. So first of all, uh, for the topological result, uh, at least uh, for true orthogonal groups, there is a different proof by uh, Bergeron also. By Bergeron, uh, Aglund, 
and Ys. It's totally different. It uses this notion of cubic uh, varieties, which I don't understand, and uh, properties, uh, really uh, topological uh, uh, methods. And I don't even know the range, but there is a different proof, uh, which is uh, probably uh, going to appear soon. The second remark is that uh, clearly in those terms, these results are uh, uh, more natural, easy, easier to understand uh, if we think of complex varieties. So uh, same kind of thing should be true in the, the fullest generality. There are special cases here, but the same should be true for uh, hyperbolic uh, complex varieties. Uh, but uh, this depends on some uh, courageous graduate student doing uh, uh, what uh, Arthur did for classical uh, symplectic or orthogonal groups for the most general uh, quasi-split unitary group. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the third remark is that uh, I'm going to say something more about uh, topology and uh, note that the, the spectral conjectures are absolutely limited to congruence groups. So uh, these are not some kind of uh, trivial representation theoretic uh, properties of uh, eigenvalues. They are really uh, uh, non-trivial. And uh, that actually follows from the topology because uh, as uh, I'll uh, explain in the uh, next uh, part, uh, th there is a conjecture which I, uh, Sarnak tells me I should not attribute to Thurston, but anyway, the well-known conjecture is that if I have uh, a group gamma as, uh, as before, uh, then uh, for some subgroup, for some subgroup, uh, delta uh, in gamma, finite index, uh, we have that the first Betty number H1 of uh, gamma again uh, with uh, uh, non-torsion coefficients, uh, should be different from zero. Okay. But in our case, that means that if we start with our congruence group, we can actually ensure that with the, some congruence subgroup, that's not important, delta and gamma with this property. Uh, sorry, gamma is the datum and delta is the thing for which we have cohomology. So we have group, uh, group delta in gamma, and uh, this is uh, true. And another way of saying it is that we have a surjecting map from uh, delta to z. But it's well known that uh, if you have a, a map like this from the fundamental group to z, then you can uh, make a construction which gives you very small eigenvalues for the Laplacian. Uh, so uh, these conjectures absolutely depend on uh, our using. Uh, <coughs> congruence groups. Um, okay. I, I really like this topological aspect, so I'll finish my lecture on uh, one variant of uh, this problem. And uh, this means that I will not have the time to explain how uh, Arth the use of Arthur, Arthur's results leads to this, but... Uh, I can at least sketch a few things uh, if asked. Okay. So uh, the third part is exotic varieties in dimension seven. So uh, I, I just explained this uh, uh, conjecture on B1 and uh, 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 whomever it's uh, due to, uh, it's known. Uh, for arithmetic groups, at least, uh, for all degree, for all dimensions, 
So uh, my dimension was n uh, different from uh, 3 or uh, 7. So of course, uh, the case of three varieties is, uh, uh, of course, the very famous topological uh, question, which apparently uh, the experts believe there, there will be some progress and we might see it solved. Uh, but I want to consider dimension 7. And why do, does this appear? Uh, because in this case, we have the strange groups due to, uh, to triality. So at this point, I do have to say something about triality. So uh, remember that uh, a group of a Q, in the previous discussion, let's just stick to the case where Q is equal to F, because actually, uh, this case appears with, uh, uh, within this situation. That's enough. So if I take a group of a Q which is absolutely simple, uh, this is defined by two things. So first of all, uh, the group of a Q bar, and that's essentially the Dinkin, Dinkin, Dinkin diagram. And uh, uh, for me, I'm going to take uh, SO8, and so this means that the Dinkin diagram is uh, uh, this. Uh, and uh, you also want a rational structure, and this comes in two parts. Uh, uh, first of all, you have to have an action of uh, the Galois group of Q bar over Q uh, on uh, the Dinkin diagram. Uh, this, uh, for the people who know these things, define the inner form of the group and uh, the, the quasi split form, and then you take an inner form. So take an inner form of, let's say, the, the first datum defines the quasi split form. Okay. Uh, now, of course, the, the case of uh, SO8 uh, is a uh, particularly interesting because the Dinkin diagram has more automorphisms. And uh, this implies that in this case, uh, we have these exotic groups such that, so uh, a triality group in this uh, lecture is one uh, for which the action of the Galois group uh, act, so the action of the Galois group is by the full uh, S3 uh, group. Okay. Uh, this exists, and this exists with my uh, usual situation. Uh, G will be of type 7-1 uh, seven, uh, seven at infinity. And uh, in this case, in fact, the group is necessarily anisotropic. So in this case, the quotients are compact. Uh, with, of course, my assumption at infinity. OK. So uh, let me uh, choose such a group. And I consider my uh, quotients uh, H7 over gamma. And uh, here is the result. Uh, if I have the following page. Seems not, but it doesn't matter. OK, so uh, theorem. So uh, assume, uh, so we can go back to the general case, uh, similar situation over F, and uh, assume that uh, gamma uh, comes from a uh, triality group, uh, GF, say, uh, then uh, for any congruent subgroup, uh, uh, gamma in uh, G of Q, 
uh, we have that uh, the H1 or the Betty number of uh, uh, gamma C, if you prefer, of course, that's the H1 of the quotient. And this, in any case, uh, this vanishes. Okay. Okay. So since I uh, won't be able to say in much about proofs, let me just uh, uh, finish with a discussion of this. Of course, this does not disprove the uh, conjecture on B1 uh, because uh, in this situation, we do not know whether there are non-congruence groups. However, what it does show is that uh, given S gamma, then there are uh, infinite covers uh, on it. So infinite, uh, I don't mean infinite covers, I mean uh, in, uh, covers of uh, arbitrarily, large, arbitrarily large degrees such that uh, say B1, uh, H1 of uh, S uh, delta remains uh, uh, zero. Uh, and uh, delta uh, being a small subgroup of uh, gamma, we can even take Galois covers. Uh, but in the other, other direction, of course, uh, we do not know uh, that uh, all uh, arithmetic groups are congruence groups. Or that uh, congruence groups are cofinal when you take towers. And uh, this implies that uh, a priori uh, the conjecture, Thurston's conjecture, might still be true. Okay. Um, I still have uh, 10 minutes, I guess. But I think I'll stop here. I'd rather answer questions than. Uh, Ah, yes, uh, so uh, there is a finesse here, of course. Yeah, so uh, I have probably uh, written things about objects which do not exist here, uh, as Deligne uh, points out, because uh, when you look at the reality, you have a problem, uh, which is that, uh, so uh, the Galois group, uh, say uh, Galois of uh, Q bar over Q, uh, is going to act uh, by the full uh, S3 group. And it means that if you take SO, SO8, uh, you have the uh, exact sequence uh, for the uh, simply connected uh, compared to the uh, adjoint group. So if we look at uh, uh, spin, uh, let's say over C at this point, spin of A, uh, this goes into SO8. Uh, that's actually quite ambiguous because you have several possible choices of subgroups here, but I still write it. And then you go into uh, the adjoint group PSO8. Okay? <coughs> and uh, the point is that the, the kernel of the full map here is, uh, of course, uh, two copies of Z2. Uh, in um, the case of triality, uh, S3, of course, is GL2Z. Uh, uh, modular representations. And um, uh, it acts uh, in the uh, obvious way here. Uh, this implies that uh, uh, you have no uh, fixed line. So in particular, you have no orthogonal group. 
So uh, when you want to construct these varieties, of course, the topology doesn't, uh, topologist doesn't see the difference. But uh, when you prove these things with Adels, you do. You have to write uh, to work either with the spin group or uh, with the adjoint group. But finally, the topological result about congruence groups is the same. Uh, you prove that if you have a congruence group above, the image is one, and conversely, you have one inside. Or in any case, there is a lemma, actually, which, which says that it's the same result as a topologist should, should expect. But uh, yes, there is this point. Yes. Then you should always develop some other convention. Like maybe I did this proof by telling that you should have the one convention. Sure, yes. Yeah. Uh, so that's the question really. Yeah. And it's quite clear. No, but here uh here no, really I don't think with the non congruence groups are the same. I don't <laughs> I, I, I really, in the, uh, in the previous case, I know that uh, Borel's ropes were, uh, were wrong. That was clear, I think, to everybody, including himself. And the point was just to find an example. Here, I think, uh, on this, uh, you, you will notice that Serre has been much more careful than others in uh, uh, stating his uh, own conjecture on congruence groups. And in particular, he doesn't say anything in this situation. And I think nobody knows. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I would be very careful in, I just don't know what's, what happens. Uh, I do hope that, uh, of course, the congruence subgroup property is true because then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes one but one that's, one. that's the thing we were discussing with, uh, with Peter Sarnak. Uh, in, uh, in Rogowski, starting with Rogowski, you have these examples where there is no H1. Yeah. But then you have this embarrassing thing, which is that, again, you have SU21. So you don't know whether the congruence subgroup property is true. Great point to mention for examples in which it's, it's, it's not true and there are covers. So Borel's statement is actually very clear. Specific examples in which there are non-congruence covers with, with H1. Uh, for SU21? Yes. Okay, you tell me. Uh, okay. So. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, this could be different. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. started with, uh, at least the restriction, started with the uh, work of Oda, who was interested in studying the representation, yes, the of Gauss course. Yes. Yes. on uh, not coming from non-complex conoids, which yeah. was, was one of the, my motivations and also one of your motivations in your yes. paper. So then I'm wondering whether these results do have any consequences that one could not prove otherwise uh, for the structure of Galois in this case. I'm skeptical. I've thought about this for years, and so I know very well what you have in mind. And uh, I'm <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, skept I'm skeptical. On the other hand, I'm I'm glad that you give me the occasion yeah, to come back to the main theme. Uh, uh, the the proofs really rely on the functoriality I uh, alluded to, which uh, now uh, I hope has been realized by uh, Jim Martyr, as people probably know the the. Uh, Final manuscript is not uh, published yet, but it's uh, expected. And um, uh, but, he will defend himself, yes. <laughs> but uh, what I want to emphasize is that all the things that we rely on are, are really hard. Uh, you need Arthur, and for Arthur, you need the fundamental lemma. Uh, and uh, so it's a miracle that actually uh, all these things can actually be proved essentially uh, sharply on the nose, except for a small error. Uh, and this is due to the, this fantastic progress. So Arthur, and then uh, uh, N'Go, Lomont, and all the people who have made the fundamental lemma work. Uh, so uh, hidden in the, the, the lecture, there is actually some 
uh, extremely deep uh, work which allows you to prove these things. Gracias.